Now, if we have several instances of, or multiple instances of each resource, we run the detection version of the, uh, of the banker's algorithm. And the detection version is slightly simpler in the sense that you don't have to argue about the future or you don't have to account for the future. All what you analyze is the present. So the detection algorithm is all about the present. So what, what does that mean? Uh, well, the, the algorithm is going to be the same as the, very much the same as the, the, the avoidance version. But here in this example, we no longer have the notion of maximum need and projected need. All what we have is current allocation and current request. So all what we analyze here in the detection version is what the processes currently have, what, what is allocated to each process, and what the processes are currently requesting. So it's all about the present. We're not doing anything related to the future. So, and, but the analysis is the same. So basically we treat the current request the way we were treating the projected need in the, uh, in the avoidance version. So we, we analyze based on the request. So in this case, we have these instances of the resources. And based on these instances and what's currently allocated, we have zero instance available of each resource. So for resource A, we have 2 plus 3 plus 2, that's 7. And the total is 7. So uh, 0 are available. Uh, resource B, we have 2, and the total is 2, so we have 0 available. So we have 0 instances available of each resource. Now, having zero instances available doesn't necessarily mean that we have a deadlock. Well, it will mean that we have a deadlock. Having zero instances available will necessarily imply a deadlock under what condition? That everything requests something more than zero. Yeah, exactly. If every process is requesting something more than zero, then we know that we have a deadlock. But since some processes are requesting zero, then we have a chance. You know, then there is a possibility of not being in a deadlock. So we just analyze it the same way. So available is 0, 0, 0. And we scan through the list of processes. Can we satisfy this? Definitely we can satisfy it because it's 0. So we put P0. Now after P0 is done, it's going to release this. So we add this to available so we will end up with zero one zero then we scan through the list again can we satisfy these needs or this request no we cannot can we satisfy this yes, yes definitely then we put p2 and after p2 is done it's going to release this 303 so we will have 313 then we scan through the list now we have 313 can we satisfy this? Yes. yes, we can. So we put P1. And after P1 is done, it's going to release two more instances of A. So we will have 513. Now with 513, can we satisfy this? Yes. yes, we can. So we put P3. And after it's done, it's going to release 211. So that's going to be 7, 2, 4. And 7, 2, 4 can definitely satisfy this, 0, 0, 2. So we put C4. C4. And after it's done, it's going to release two more instances of C. So we'll have 7, 2, 6. OK. So we found a safe sequence, which means that we don't have a deadlock. Now, is the safe sequence here unique? No. No, it's not unique. Why? You can start with P2. Yeah, at least I could have started with P2, not P0. So I know that at least I have two safe sequences, but I may have more. Because if, you know, at the, you know, if in step one I have two options, 
In step two, I may have multiple options as well. And in step three, I may have multiple options. So I may end up with a tree. So, in, uh, so I may have multiple uh, safe sequences. So in this case, the safe sequence is not unique. I may have multiple safe sequences, but one safe sequence is sufficient to say that uh, I don't have a deadlock. Yes? Do we also have the convention for this one? Like, we'll have only the safe sequence in this order? Yeah, for because, example? well, in fact, this comes from the algorithm, because the algorithm, uh, so this has to do with that. So the algorithm here, when it looks for a process, it goes from process 0 to process n minus 1. So it has to do with the way the algorithm is written. So if I change this from, uh, you know, if I reverse this, I make it n minus 1 to 0, then I will find the, the process with the largest number or with the largest index first. So it's all dependent on the algorithm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, we have a safe sequence. Now, what if a process, process one requests one zero two? What will happen if process one requests one zero two? Now, my available is still the same. If this process, process one requests one zero two, I'm gonna update the need of process one to, uh, oh, so, um, Bankers. Uh, I, <laughs> I went back to the avoidance uh, example because I wanted to show you the code. Uh, okay. Now, if P2 requests an additional instance of C, P2 requests an additional instance of C, so now P2 is no longer requesting 000, it's requesting 001. Can we find the safe sequence now? Well, we will try. We have 000. P0, we can satisfy the needs of P0. And then after P0 is done, it's going to release this. So we'll still have 010. Zero, zero. Now with 010, zero, zero, can, can we satisfy any of the requests? No. So we cannot satisfy this with 010. Zero, zero. We cannot satisfy uh, P1's, uh, P2's request because it's requesting an instance of C and we have 0. We can't satisfy P3's request because it's requesting an instance of A and we have 0. And we can't satisfy any request. So what does this mean? It means that we have a deadlock. Now, the deadlock that is involving now P1, P2, P3, P4. P0 is not in the deadlock. OK. So now what's the intuition behind this? You know, what's the int so OK, mathematically, we couldn't find a safe sequence. And we concluded that we have a deadlock. But intuitively, what does this mean? What does it mean? Why do you know? Why does it make sense here uh, to say that we have a deadlock? We intuitively, don't, we don't have enough resources. To okay, we don't have a, a enough resources, but we may have them in the future. Why won't we have them? Why do we know that the resources that we need will not be available in the future? How do we know? Because they're all waiting on, on that one resource pool, and until more resources free up, they're just going to continue to wait. Mm -hmm. Because they're waiting for resources, and the resources that they're waiting for are held by processes that are waiting. So what's the, you know, what's the state of P1? P1 is waiting, P2 is waiting, P3 is waiting, P4 is waiting. All of them are waiting, and they're waiting for resources. But who has these resources? These resources are held by P1, P2, P3. some of these processes that are waiting themselves. So the waiting processes themselves have the, process, the, the resources that they are waiting for. Or each process has the resources that other processes are waiting for. So there is no hope that these resources will become available because they are held by waiting processes. Okay, so this is the the in, in intuitive understanding of why we have a deadlock here. Okay, questions on this?
Okay, so this is the detection version of the banker's algorithm. Now, uh, we'll just talk about, uh, in terms of deadlock detection, uh, some issues related to how we can use this and how we can then recover from a deadlock. Now, if we want to use this algorithm, we should be invoking this detection algorithm on a regular basis to check if there is a deadlock or not. But the question is how often should we do that? If we do it very often, then we will be paying the <coughs> mn squared price very often, and this is a high price. This is a high computational cost. We will be paying this high computational cost. Now, if we do it less frequently, then the problem is that we, we may not detect a deadlock until uh, you know, things have gotten to a very complicated uh, state. So it, uh, uh, you know, every detection is always good. You know, if you detect a problem late, then the problem may be too complex to resolve or too complex to analyze. So that's, that's the, the, the point. But every detection requires invoking the algorithm very frequently. And if you invoke it frequently, then there is a computational cost because the algorithm is computationally expensive. Okay. Now, assuming that we have detected a deadlock, how do we recover from a deadlock? In principle, there are two possible ways. One is terminating some processes. The other is preempting some processes from certain resources. So you either terminate a process completely, or you just take some resources from a process. To terminate a process completely, uh, well, you will have to terminate at least one process per cycle. So for every cycle, you need to terminate a process. By the way, the example that we have seen today you know, we, we could resolve the deadlock by terminating one process because we could find processes that are on both cycles. So these processes that, that can resolve the deadlock, there are processes that are located on both cycles and that those can terminate the deadlock, uh, resolve the deadlock, while this process is on a single cycle, so it will uh, it will not resolve the deadlock completely because it's only on one cycle. Uh, okay, so you need one cycle, one process per cycle, but if you have a process that uh, that is part of multiple cycles, then by deleting that, by terminating that process, you, will resolve, you may resolve the deadlock. Uh, but in order to select a process, there are other considerations as well, like the priority of a process, you know, certainly if you have a choice you would like, then you should terminate the lower priority processes, or a lower priority process, <coughs> not a higher priority process. How long the process has computed, if, if you have a choice, you, uh, you pick a process that has not been computing for a long time, uh, the resources that the process has used, uh, the resources that the process needs to complete, uh, how many processes will need to be terminated? That depends on how many, uh, how many cycles you have. Uh, is the process interactive or batch? So this is very much related to priority. It's the same point because as we have seen in scheduling, operating systems give higher priority to Interactive or batch? Batch. Interact. Higher priority to interactive <coughs> processes. To interactive processes with shorter CPU bursts. Remember, shorter CPU bursts. A process with a short with shorter CPU bursts gets higher priority. That's a, an interactive <laughs> process. And it always makes sense to give higher priority to an interactive process because the user of a batch process can win. Uh, now preemption. 
the emptying of process. What we need to understand here is that not all resources are preemptive. So the CPU is a resource that can be scheduled preemptively because there is a clear mechanism for uh, saving and restoring the state of a process so that we, when the process gets the CPU again, it can uh, pick up from where it left off. So this pick up from where it left off or the ability to restart the process without uh, incorrect behavior, this is, a this is something that we could do with the CPU because we could save and restore. But this doesn't apply to all resources. In particular, it doesn't apply to locks and semaphores. It doesn't make sense to preempt a process from a lock or a <coughs> semaphore as we explained in a previous lecture, in one of the earlier lectures on deadlocks. Uh, so this is not a, a practical choice because uh, not all resources are preemptive or there are resources that are naturally non-preemptive. But assuming that we that this is a choice, then we will just select a process, and instead of terminating that process, we will just take some resources, preempt that process from resources. And uh, you know, this is you know, we have the difficulty of rolling back or going back to the previous state or restarting the process, uh, and we have the starvation problem because if we keep picking the same process over and over, or a lower priority process uh, then for uh, preemption, then that lower priority process may start. Okay. All right, so this ends our discussion of deadlocks.